Hey, what is going on guys? Matt here and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you five things we already know about exosomes and treating hair loss. So stay tuned. This video is brought to you by GoFiber Hair Building Fibers. Pick up your free sample and get instant hair confidence. Start your transformation today. Hey, welcome back everybody. My name is Matt and you are watching my hair loss and hair transplant related channel. Now, as always, if you are interested in a hair transplant, there is a possibility to download my free ebook, Five Things I Wished I Had Known Before My Hair Transplant, which you can get on my website, mattdominance.com. And now let's come back to the topic of today's video. Now, the thing number one that we already know about exosomes for sure is that there are transporters of important information between different cells in our body. Now, funny enough, exosomes were first thought of as carriers of cellular waste, okay? So they were thought of as being totally useless. But fortunately for all of us, studies which came out over the last couple of years found out that exosomes are not that useless less at all, but uh, quite the opposite. They are carrying very important information in forms of proteins, lipids and micro RNA, which basically tells another cells in your body what to do and what not to do. Now let's put exosomes more in relation to hair loss itself. The thing number two that we know about exosomes is that exosomes derived from dermal papilla cells significantly induced the antigen phase while delaying the catagen phase. Most of these studies were done on animals like rats or mice in this case. We also know that the exosomes derived from these dermal papilla cells were shown to enhance the multiplication and migration of outer root sheet cells in vitro. Root sheet cells are basically cells which are very important for the hair follicle development, okay? The thing number three that we know about exosomes so far is that there have been no clinical or no human trials which had been announced on exosomes in the hair restoration field. No public announcements on such trials so far. Now the thing number four that we know uh, about exosomes and hair loss will have something to do with the FDA. Exosome treatments are not FDA approved for hair loss yet. There are some exosome treatments which have been already FDA cleared. These exosomes treatments which had been FDA cleared were no hair loss related exosomes treatments, but other exosome treatments related to osteoporosis, regeneration of different types of cells in your body, not the hair cells themselves. And they were only FDA cleared, which means they were proven that they are not dangerous, but also not as effective. No official FDA approval for the exosome treatments in the hair restoration industry so far. Fifth thing that we know about exosomes is their production. There are two ways how exosomes can be produced or manufactured. First way how to do it is basically to remove the exosomes from your blood, okay? As it is the case with the platelet-rich plasma. Such exosome and rich plasma could be then injected back onto the recipient areas where you have hair loss. Now the second way how to produce or create exosomes of different types of stem cells is basically to create them in a laboratory where you basically simulate different types of stem cells and make them create these or produce these different types of exosomes. To make this video more objective and interesting to you as a watcher, I decided to list several things at the end which we don't know about exosomes and hair loss. Thing number one, will everybody be a great responder to exosomes? We know by PRP or A cell that not everybody has to be a great responder to this, okay? This will also affect the potential FDA approval because FDA only likes to approve things that work for most of the individuals out there. Second thing, how often will you need to repeat such exosome treatment? Once a year, once every two years, every six months? We don't really know at the moment. Thing number three, what would be the optimal concentration of exosome enriched plasma or exosomes and what would be the right dosage? We don't really know and the only way how to find out is with trial and error. 
Thing number four, will it work by everybody? Can it make a Norwood 7 guy to at least like Norwood 5 or 4 or even Norwood 1? We don't really know. Will it only work by people with still some miniaturized hair present in the scalp? Probably, but we don't know at the moment. In theory, it's quite promising because the studies found out that even very bald individuals have still hair stem cells in their scalp but these stem cells kind of don't know what to do and they need the right signals. And if you inject now exosomes inside these areas, you make these stem cells active again, make them multiply and make them develop new hair follicles, theoretically, okay? But we don't really know unless we make more studies on humans and exosomes and hair loss. At the end of this video, let me just briefly mention one very interesting project on exosome research. Biotech company Avalon, they try to co-develop a method or device which will basically standardize the way how the exosomes are being isolated and applied. They also focus on isolating of tissue specific exosomes and this is especially important important because for example for us men who are suffering from hair loss it's going to be very important that we will be able to get as many of these exosomes which are coming from the hair follicle tissue as opposed to exosomes which are coming from the bone related tissue okay unfortunately Avalon is not focusing on a treating hair loss with exosomes at least not at this very moment, what they are doing, they are developing their own product, which is called ACTEX, means Avalon's clinical grade tissue specific exosomes, which is focused on angiogenic and orthopedic regeneration, uh, which again has something to do with uh, joint regeneration and bone regeneration, okay? So I think this is the next goal in the hair restoration industry to make more human trials. I think there is a lot of opportunity for different companies uh, which could start selling or developing new drugs uh, which would be exosome related drugs for hair loss uh, so there could be many many more human trials coming on exosomes and hair loss so that could be very interesting I'm really looking forward how this will develop I'm gonna let you know uh, keep you posted on this channel once I see some interesting companies uh, products being developed around exosomes and I would love to see more progress on this because it seems very promising let me know in the comments below what you think about exosomes and hair loss if you have any interesting news or something that you would like to share let us know in the comments below other than that hope you like this video let me know give it a thumbs up if it provides you some interesting facts which you didn't know i would be very appreciative of that thank you so much for watching guys and see you in the next video